Hi, so I want to focus today on oxidation in terms of chemoselectivity in organic synthesis. Now, the subject of oxidation, much like the other video I did on reduction, is an incredibly large subject. And there is no ways that in a few minutes I can get through enough uh, material that sort of covers everything that uh, under this title of oxidation. Uh, the purpose of this, this video is really just to give you a bit of an overview of some of the classic methods that are involved and some of the chemoselectivity issues uh, that revolve around, uh, around them. So when we talk about oxidation um, in organic uh, chemistry, um, we really, the, the way to see it is by carbon gaining more bonds to a heteroatom. So uh, ethanol, for instance, if it gets oxidized, uh, goes up to acetaldehyde. We have lost two hydrogen atoms and we talk about this being uh, an oxidation uh, reaction. Formally, it is loss of electrons because we've got more bonds to an oxygen, which is more electronegative. So we have lost so-called electrons on the carbon and so it is an oxidation reaction. Um, and so uh, the carbon can be fully oxidized up to a carboxylic acid level. So we have a one bond, two bonds, or three bonds to a heteroatom. Now, um, in organic chemistry, one of the more important of the types of oxidation reactions is getting a uh, primary alcohol up to an aldehyde. And the classic example of that is PCC, um, or pyridinium chlorochromate. And so this is something that you've learned in first year and you've seen in second year. And this is a classic example of being able to go from a uh, primary alcohol to an aldehyde. And of course, it can also react with a, uh, a secondary alcohol to go to a ketone. Um, what I want to do here is that these chromium reagents, um, I mean, the, the next chromium reagent is Jones's reagent, which is chromium trioxide um, with some sulfuric acid. Um, so this reagent will take all, you, all the way to the carboxylic acid. It's an incredibly powerful oxidizing agent, and so it will go all the way to the carboxylic acid. Um, but PCC is also a chromium-based reagent. Now, chromium, of course, is not actually environmentally friendly, so there are other methods to be able to do these types of reactions. Um, in organic chemistry, what we won't, I'm not going to focus on in this course over here, but it's if you really like uh, mechanisms, go and look this up. Uh, classic bench scale um, methods, the one is the Swern oxidation, um, and the other one is something known as Des Martin pyridinane. Um, Des is named after Des Martin um, pyridinane. Okay, also just shortened as DMP. So these are two that you can go and have a look up. They're also good at doing these primary alcohols to aldehydes and often get used in the lab. It's quite a smelly one. Um, what I would like you to learn, though, uh, besides PCC, let's add on um, a new reagent called TPAP. Um, and TPAP is used catalytically. So TPAP is normally used in conjunction with another oxidant called NMO. So now we've got a whole bunch of little acronyms over here. What are we actually talking about? This is a ruthenium uh, catalyst. It's ruthenium tetroxide, uh, which is negatively charged. And the counter ion is a tetra, so this is the TP stone, it's a tetrapropyl ammonium perruthenate. So we've got tetrapropyl, there's four propyls, it's positively charged. And it's this over here. And we can use this in catalytic amounts. And that's what makes it a bit more greener and a bit more uh, nicer to, to work with. What is NMO? NMO is a very common uh, oxidant in uh, organic chemistry, or what I should rather say is a co-oxidant. Uh, it stands for n uh, methyl n oxide Sorry, I said that a bit wrong there. n morpholino n oxide So this is morpholine this is morpholine over there. That's the N-methyl version of it. And if you oxidize this with something like bleach, for instance, you can put an O- on there, and this is positively charged. This is an N-oxide, and this is a, a good co-oxidant. And what's nice is that this is cheap and easy uh, to use. The catalyst, obviously, is expensive, but you're only using it in catalytic amounts. And this is really good, very, very nice, uh, certainly a bit more greener version of being able to go from a alcohol to an aldehyde over there. So these are the two that I'd really like you to, to know in order to do that reaction over there. Uh, chromium uh, Jones's reagent, which is this one over here, is good for doing either one of those steps. It is a, a chromium reagent. Um, there's another reagent, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it now, um, 
potassium permanganate, KMnO4. Now, <clears throat> I want us to be a little bit careful with KMnO4. Um, in textbooks, it's often sort of kind of shown as being a uh, doing a number of different oxidation reactions, but it's a really, really powerful um, oxidizing reagent, and, and practically it's not um, that useful. So it'll certainly take an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid, um, and but perhaps I don't know for its most useful purpose is doing something like this: taking toluene, sort of KMnO4, basic conditions, and it oxidizes that methyl group to the carboxylic acid. And that is, I guess, a useful reaction to uh, to do. Um, but just to show how kind of like challenging this reagent is, if you take the toluene, which is that, it'll do that. But if you take the ethyl benzene, so we're just adding one extra carbon like that, we take ethyl benzene and subject it to the conditions, what do we get? We get that as well. So it actually cuts the carbon-carbon bond um, away uh, when it when it does something like that and and another example is if we took this uh, structure over here so we've got the two six membered rings and we treat it with KMnO4 what happens is we actually cut the two ends uh, off and we get this dicarboxylic acid over here all right so KMnO4 is really really uh, a strong oxidizing agent the other thing that KMnO4 is often talked about in, a, uh, in, in textbooks is its ability to be used to dihydroxylate. So we take something like cyclohexene and we add KMnO4, again, under basic conditions, uh, and what happens is we get the dihydroxyl uh, product over there, So and it's a syn, so we get 2OH. So Yes, this does work, but again, it's a really, really powerful oxidizing agent, and actually, it typically can go on further, and it cuts this bond over there, and we get the two carboxylic acids uh, remaining, so we end up with, oh, I shouldn't have done that, sorry, um, and we end up with the two carboxylic acids, sorry, that's very... Um, badly drawn. Um, so this is a really, and, and it's quite indiscriminate. So if you've got other functional groups in the molecules, you're going to start um, chowing things up. If you want to do a dihydroxylation, something you've already learned uh, in your courses and you should know that is the better option is using osmium tetroxide. Now osmium tetroxide is also really, really expensive. Um, and it will, it does, it, and, and ridiculously expensive. So you would not do this in a stoichiometric amount. We would also do this catalytically. Um, and so we need a catalytic oxidant. And what do we use? NMO um, is a great uh, addition to that. So we can actually uh, do this in a catalytic uh, sense over there. So that can do this dihydroxylation um, uh, reaction over there. <clears throat> okay. Um, lastly, I just want to remind you of some uh, reagents and things that you've already looked at. So the one is uh, ozonolysis. So ozonolysis. Um, this really is a great um, way of cleaving double bonds and ending up with, with aldehydes. Uh, so the classic example, again, is the sort of cyclohexene. I'll just put a methyl group over there. Um, and it's a two-step process. You generate the ozone, you bubble it through the reaction, and it forms a, um, an ozonide and then a malozonide, and there's a mechanism involved in that. And the last step is we need to add a reductant, a typical reductancy, the zinc. Um, you don't have to remember both. Uh, here's one just using dimethyl sulfide. Um, either zinc or dimethyl sulfide is okay. You don't need to uh, memorize one in particular. Uh, and what happens is it cleaves that double bond. So it's cleaving it over there and it replaces it with uh, carbonyl. So we get, let me draw it down there so it's neat. So we end up with the aldehyde and the ketone in this case over here. So ozonolysis will react with double bonds really well. Not benzene rings, um, okay, not benzene rings, but just isolated double bonds, it's going to cleave um, really well and you're going to get this reaction occurring. So that's a good, it's an oxidation, um, uh, an oxidative cleavage actually. Uh, the other one which connects a little bit to reduction is the hydroboration, um, followed by oxidation. So that's a really important um, one. So that's using borane. So again, uh, similar 
uh, reagent over there, uh, uh, starting material, shall I say. So we've got borane, BH3, and the second step is an oxidation uh, uh, reaction with uh, H2O2 and uh, base to cleave the borate ester that, that is get, gets formed uh, as an intermediate. All right. Uh, and this one is occurs as a syn addition. So the BH adds to the same face. So if the methyl group goes down because the H was over there, the boron was facing up. And so when it gets oxidized, the OH is facing up as well over there. So this is an important um, one which you've seen in second year and just a reminder on that. Uh, and the last one which you saw in second year which is just on this theme of uh, uh, oxidations is of course uh, uh, epoxidation. And for epoxidation there are lots of different reagents out there but the most famous one which is a good workhorse in the in the lab is uh, MCPBA. Um, which is the metachloroperbenzoic acid. So it's a perbenzoic acid. So benzoic acid would look like that. And it's a perbenzoic acid. It's a peroxide. And it's a metachloro uh, perbenzoic acid. So this is a uh, really readily available, easy uh, oxidizing agent. And this will react with the double bonds, the same uh, reagent uh, that we had over there. Just off of it. Um, and uh, epoxidation obviously occurs, okay, and this is normally done in something like DCM. You just mix those two together, and epoxidation obviously happens on the same face. So if this ended up going uh, down, the epoxide would have been facing up over there. Sorry, let's do that over there. So it's on the same face, so the oxygen is really small. All right, so um, those really is an overview of the oxidizing agents that I'd like you to know, certainly by the, um, the end of third year. Again, there really are a lot of other uh, reagents out there, but this is just, just a bit of a survey. In terms of um, things that are new to you, all of this is just really a revision of what you this page over here. Uh, on this page over here, a lot of it is a type of revision. Perhaps TPAP is one of the newest ones um, that you have been exposed to that I'm showing to you um, now. And, um, but I recommend just for your interest, go and have a look up these two, particularly if you're interested in organic chemistry and following on, uh, Swern oxidation, Desmod and Pride, and they really are um, also important uh, reagents. Okay, good.